I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I got to the point where, uh, you know, I had thought about kind of calling it quits, um, just because of the fact that like it, it kind of wasn't working out for me uh, the last uh, for the last couple spots I've been at. Um, this was like literally the only spot that I felt like could have made me want to play football and, and go out there and be excited to play. Like this was like literally the only you know place that I, that could have called me and I got me to ready to play because. Um, I was going to start boxing and focusing on boxing, you know, but um, I think this was like a great opportunity, you know, it's, it's something you can't, you know, really turn down playing with um, Coach Arians and Tom Brady and, you know, obviously AB, like, you know, they got um, a good thing going over here, you know, and um, to come out, come over here and, and try to help, you know, I'm going to try to do my thing. Uh, Le'Veon Bell, who was cut by the Ravens, and he had a few moments. It was weird to see him in number 17, that's for sure, but – you know, he, he, he adds to the Bucks right now because they have a need. Neil Watch's PFT had the question, do you think Le'Veon Bell's signing adds anything but depth in Tampa Bay? Well, it's not depth when you're already at the depth. Gio Bernard, last I heard, he's banged up, right? You've got Ronald yeah, Jones, who isn't quite the – isn't close to the pass catcher that Leonard Fournette has evolved into. You need somebody who can replace Leonard Fournette, who's going to be out for the rest of the regular season. Anytime you're on crutches with a hamstring injury, that's a bad hamstring injury. If your hamstring is yeah. so badly injured that you need crutches to walk, you're you're messed up, and it's going to be a while till that muscle heals to the point where you can go out and play full speed, full contact football. So he's there to play. He's there to reunite with Antonio Brown, a couple of teammates from Pittsburgh and uh, try to come together and win a Super Bowl in Tampa Bay. And I don't know, I don't know what Le'Veon Bell's got left in the tank, but we're going to find out because they need him. They, he's not going to be a guy that they bring along slowly. I think he gets thrust into it. The moment he shows he's ready to go, he's gone. Yeah, well, I mean, that's why they signed him to the 53-man roster and not just to the practice squad where it's like, oh, well, will you be able to play? Will you not be able to play? No, they need him right now. So, I mean, you go back to just a few years ago, and he and Antonio Brown were two of the most productive players on offense in the NFL. I mean, you think about that duo, right? You had the Killer Bees, I think they called them, with Bell and Brown in Pittsburgh. They were always going for a lot of yards. They're always scoring a lot of touchdowns. Touchdown. So I'm not saying that they're going to be able to wind the clock back like that. I mean, it's kind of like the Los Angeles Lakers, right? Where you're signing a bunch of guys that were good in 2012, 2013, 2014. And now it's like, oh my gosh, look, are they going to be able to win a championship? And the answer is not really. Um, but I, I do think that when you have somebody like Love Bell, who's got that experience and can come in and is excited to play with Tom Brady and his old teammate and Antonio Brown, then who knows what it's going to turn into. It's at least something that makes sense, right? It's not just like, oh, well, we're going to go out and get a name. Like they need this guy and they need his skill set. Interesting dynamic in Tampa from last year to this year. This is a point that Rick Stroud of the Tampa Bay uh, Times made yesterday when he joined Shereen Williams and I on the program. The idea that in 2020, there was a greater sense of interchangeability of the receivers, and Tom Brady had a relationship, a rapport with all of them. This year, it's evolved to Tom's guys, and the problem is three of Tom's guys went down in Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and Leonard Fournette. So uh, that, that creates a problem because we're late in the regular season. He's got to get back on the same page with a Scotty Miller. And, you know, Antonio Brown, who hasn't played since that game back on a Thursday night in Philadelphia, he's got to get back up to speed. Here comes Le'Veon Bell. they got a serious problem in Tampa Bay. And, and you know, I know if by saying that, Miles, we almost guarantee they're going to run the table and then not lose in the postseason. But they do have a serious problem with all these injuries on offense. And Tom no. Brady getting banged around like he, like he hasn't gotten banged around since he came to Tampa Bay. For sure. Look, I mean, I think anytime you see Tom Brady's team get shut out, which is something that just has not happened in so many years, 15 years since a Tom Brady team was last shut out, then yeah, you're going to sort of expose that there are some warts there. There are some problems there. And I think that if you get in somebody like a Le'Veon Bell, maybe that can help. Fortunately, they still have Rob Gronkowski. And I think just based on the chemistry that those two guys have from all of their shared reps together, not just in Tampa Bay, obviously, but in New England, that kind of helps out the process. But yeah, they've got to make sure that, that pass protection is solid because you can't have Tom Brady getting battered around at 44 years old and expect him to still be the guy that could ostensibly win an MVP this year. It's just not going to happen.
Our good friend A-Red Zone Alec wants to know how strong the market would be for Pete Carroll if he's fired by the Seattle Seahawks. And that's not out of the question. If you decide to keep Russell Wilson, you may have to get a coach that Russell Wilson believes will give him that offensive football PhD that he now needs instead of the GED that he's got in the last 10 years with Pete Carroll's approach to run the ball, run the ball. Oh, crap, there's five minutes left. Russell, can you save us? So, you know, there's been this sense that if Mike Tomlin would get fired, he'd instantly find another job. And I think that teams that have coaches they're happy with would consider dumping them if they could get Mike Tomlin. If Pete Carroll's gone, Miles, do you think he would have the – Adam Gase, Eric Mangini immediately land somewhere else. I think he should. You know, if I'm the Raiders or if I'm the Jaguars, which are the two teams that currently have vacancies, I would be interested in Pete Carroll. You know, if I'm the Jaguars and I want to be able to build a culture and build a program, if I'm Shad Khan, you know, and my last hire went as poorly as it did with Urban Meyer, I at least know that I have credibility with Pete Carroll because he's coming off basically a decade of success with the Seattle Seahawks. This is the first year now with that loss that the Seahawks had last night to the Los Angeles Rams that the Seahawks have not had a winning record with Russell Wilson. They drafted Russell Wilson back in 2012. I was still in college, right? So that I think tells you that there is some instant credibility there. So if Pete Carroll were to get fired, yeah, I think there should be some interest in getting him in there to at least start a program build. Cause I mean, how long is Pete Carroll going to coach? We don't know. He's still up there in age. I like the Jaguars as a possibility, not the Raiders, but I like the Jaguars. That could be the right way to try to move on from urban Meyer. And it's not a 10 year fix. Who knows? Maybe it is, but it stabilizes the team lays the foundation and you've already got, I don't know that it's a good thing to have Brian Schottenheimer and Daryl Bevel already there, but they've worked for right. Pete Carroll in the past. And Meyer was actually talking to Pete Carroll a lot. Although I don't know that that's a feather in Carroll's cap. If, if Con wants to go in a different <laughs> direction from anything. Just two negatives remotely. there, Mike. Just, yeah. So maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. Maybe Pete Carroll takes a year off. Uh, PFT Pam Posse, real quickly, how big of a financial apology check will the Packers have to write Aaron Rodgers before next season? I still don't think, that he's all that inclined to come back next year. Part of it also may be just an, a play for attention. But, but I know this. We talk about tiers of quarterback pay. He's making $33.5 million per year. Jared Goff is making $33.5 million per year. I think bare minimum, if Aaron Rodgers is going to stay in Green Bay, somebody there has got to decide to give him a gigantic check because if he would end up with a new team he's getting a new contract with that new team so this is either going to be a, a a divorce or a renewal of vowels vowels or vowels vowels renewal vowels. of vowels after the no season else. not renewal of vowels not no no renewal of vowels this is a wheel of fortune but it's it's going to be one or the other he's either going to be gone or he's staying for the rest of his career and it comes to a head after this season I don't think it's vowels because Aaron Rodgers hasn't been taking many L's with the Green Bay Packers lately. So, uh, yeah, I well think done. that they uh, – thank you very much. I think that they are going to need him because, look, he's probably going to win a second straight MVP this year. I don't think he should go anywhere. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.